This past some, summer, something funny happened to me. Uh, in the morning, I was pulling clean laundry out of our dryer, and I found a couple of coins, and I put them in my pocket. And then an hour later, I was still on my like cleaning spree, and I was emptying a purse out. You know, you might transition from one purse to another, you know, and I found a couple more coins, and so I put those in my pocket. Halfway through the day, I reached into my pocket and I pulled out a random amount of coins and I gave them to my son because he's got a piggy bank. I'm like, okay, you can put some of those in there. And I knew that I had a couple left in my pocket but didn't think anything of it. After dinner, I needed to run an errand. Some prescriptions at the pharmacy were ready early for once. So, yay, lucky. And I set out by chance. Instead of going through the drive-thru, I decided to park and go into the store. I went in, I waited in line, I got the prescriptions, I headed back out to the car, and in the parking lot, there was a man walking by, and he said, oh, hey, I know this is really random, but do you have 85 cents? You already know what happened. That was the exact amount of coins that I had in my pocket. Not a penny more, not a penny less. Friends, I will be the first to confess that like every person in my age group, I do not carry cash. Not even coins. My most embarrassing moment is that I bought a stamp on a debit card. I don't carry cash. But this moment, I was carrying the exact amount that he needed in my pocket. And I laughed as I handed it over, and it washed over me, that knowing and that feeling that it wasn't random, it wasn't chance, it wasn't luck, it wasn't a funny thing that happened to me, that it was God on the smallest scale, putting me in the right place with the right gifts, and the right time to be generous. Will you pray with me? God, you have led us to be a family that studies your word together. So now we pray asking for your blessing of wisdom to come on all of us, on my words and all of our hearts, as we learn and grow with you. Amen. Esther had a rough start in life. She was an orphan, but before long, the tides change. She starts to receive blessing after blessing, gift after gift. First, her uncle Mordecai adopts her as his own and raises her. Imagine where a young girl would have been without the help from a family member in their time. Next, when she's of marrying age, the king happens to be seeking a new wife. And out of all of the young women who vied for the position, Esther is chosen. She's given a life of luxury. Chapter 2 tells us all about Esther's year-long beauty regimen. So if you're looking for Bible beauty regimens, check out Esther chapter 2. It talks about the servants that she's been given to help her. Maybe being married off to someone that you don't know well isn't your idea of being blessed or a gift, but Esther and Mordecai welcome it. They know that this marriage will provide a better life for Esther than they could have imagined. Next, as it turns out, not only does the king receive Esther into his home, but she is favored, treasured given special treatment. Through all of this, Mordecai continues to be Esther's guide. He comes to walk by the palace walls and talks to her and advises her. Esther has much to be grateful for. But here in chapter four, again, things take a turn. Esther hears that Mordecai is in mourning that he's loudly going about the town in mourning clothes, which would be like a burlap sack, kind of. 
He's making such a big impact that all the Jews in the surrounding countryside are copying his actions. Esther tries to help as she knows best, and she sends some regular clothes so that Mordecai doesn't have to wear the morning clothes, but her messenger comes back to her with a request from Mordecai, or as the scripture says, an order to go to the king and seek his kindness and his help for her people. If you don't know the story super well, Mordecai is in mourning because Haman, the king's official, offered to pay vast amounts of silver to kill off all the Jews living in the area, all because Mordecai would not bow to Haman at the city gates. So Haman like spun the tale as that all of the Jews, these vast groups of people, are not going to follow any of your rules, king. And he got the king to agree to the plan. So it's for this new law that all the Jewish people, men, women, children, everyone, not just Haman, everyone will be killed on a certain day. That is why Mordecai is demanding help from Esther. Obviously, I'm not a fool. Obviously, it is a much bigger and more important scale. But Mordecai is asking Esther, do you have 85 cents? Can you go to the king? Esther hesitates, which is fair. I don't think any of us would blame her. Again, she is being asked for far more than 85 cents. The whole time that Esther has been in the king's court, she has not mentioned to anyone that she is Jewish, per the instruction of her uncle. If the king is already mad at the Jews, which he's not really, but she doesn't know that, who's to say that she wouldn't be killed on the spot? And on top of that, There was another law in place, one that it didn't matter if she was Jewish or not, if she was male or female. If someone, anyone, comes into the king's chambers without being called, they would be killed unless the king recognizes their presence with a gold scepter. Again, it makes sense that Esther hesitates at Mordecai's ask. Reading in between the lines, I also can't help but think that Esther might have asked herself, in this whole empire, with all the king's officials and advisors, with the many other beautiful women around, what would my one voice be able to do? What would I say? Certainly, I don't have what it takes to make this happen. Sure, I'm favored among everyone that I meet, and sure, I'm I'm already in the court, and sure, I was saved from a life of orphanhood to end up here, but what can I really do? So through her messenger, Esther replies to her uncle and reminds him of the risks. He responds with perhaps one of my favorite lines of scripture. Who knows? Maybe it was time for a time such as this that you came to be part of the royal family. Who knows? Maybe it was for a time such as this. Don't you see that God has been leading you here to this exact moment, Esther? We need 85 cents, and you have it in your pocket. We need our freedom, our lives, and you have your position, your voice, your sway. You can take all that you've been given, all that you are grateful for, and now is the time to turn that gratitude not into fear about losing it, but instead, turning the gratitude into generosity for your people. It's in this precise moment that God has prepared you for this. So Esther takes up the charge from her uncle, and she does it. She goes to the king, she is granted recognition with the golden scepter, and she saves the Jewish people. She turns all that she had been given for this precise moment 
into a bold, beautiful, courageous act of generosity. We have had so many moments like this just in the past year at YPC. I had to narrow it down. I asked Pastor Kathy if I could share the story of her arrival here, and she agreed. Kathy um, was in a clergy group with my husband, and he offered to host the next meeting of the group at the manse, at our house. At the time, much to my cleaning dismay. (laughs) But he just happened to offer it. And he happened to say, rather than giving our actual address, He said, just Google the church and find the address because that works better in your GPS system. And Pastor Kathy, who was in the group, just happened to Google the church and then just happened to click on the homepage and then just happened to see the job description for director of children's education and then just happened to say to Daniel, she might be interested, on which I pounced. This was after months spent in prayer and discernment on her end, praying for her next call and God saying, wait. And during those months, she just happened to be working on the Methodist committee that showed her how it's possible to work in another denomination and how one would go about doing that. None of this is happenstance. It was God putting Kathy in the right place at the right time with the right skill set for such a time as this. We've had people show up on days when we've needed extra help and said, hey, I'm randomly free today. Need anything around the church? We've had donations and prayers and connections left and right from the Holy Spirit. God has placed us collectively right here, right now, in such a time as this to do God's work. We are fully staffed. We've paid off our church debt. We've got a great building. Our bases are covered. God has us covered. We are full of gratitude. And now is our chance to turn that into generosity to see what God does with it. One more thing we need to note about Esther. She does not do this monumental task alone. Before Esther goes to the king, she invites all of the Jewish people through the land, Mordecai helps spread the word, to pray with her, to fast and prepare spiritually. She knows what gifts she has to give, her voice and her position, but she also knows that the people have the gift of prayer for this precise moment for such a time as this. So when everyone works together to be generous with what they have, that's what changes their world. Friends, we will be asked to share things that are more difficult than 85 cents. Like Esther, we may be asked to be courageous in giving from what we have. We may need to be generous with our voice, our time, our talents, or any of the many things that we've been given. But our challenge and our charge is to turn our gratitude of what we have into generosity for others, to use what God has given us in such a time as this. I didn't tell you the end of my pharmacy parking lot story. I laughed and I handed over 85 cents. I said, this is wild. This is exactly what I have in my pocket and this never happens. And the man said, well, it must be a gift from God. I laughed again and I said, well, I'm a pastor and I have to agree. He seemed quite shocked that it happened to be that the one person he asked in the parking lot, because there were others, happened to be a pastor. So we shared a short and sweet prayer, and it's one of those moments that'll linger with me for a long time. 
God is working through us right now in a million different ways, inviting us to turn our gratitude into generosity in the smallest and in the biggest, most important ways, all in such a time as this. Praise be to God. Amen.